Hi, welcome to our channel TrueUp. Russia announced plans to invest $900 billion to promote its domestic ICT sector in March of this year. Huawei promptly shipped more than $15 million in 5G-related equipment to Russia after learning about it. It appears to be a routine transaction, but when you consider the existing circumstances, you will realize that this transaction is far more complicated than it appears. ICT is a technical word, therefore all communication devices, software, and related services, including television, mobile phones, video conferencing, and computers, come under its umbrella. 5G is the primary force behind ICT. In other words, 5G technology cannot be ignored in today's society if you want to expand ICT. Prior to providing Huawei with the necessary 5G equipment, Russia's domestic 5G market was almost unpopulated. How come? We all know that the United States has encouraged several nations and businesses to boycott Russia as a result of the war between that country and Ukraine, including Ericsson and Nokia. You should be aware that only companies like Huawei, ZTE, Ericsson, and Nokia are currently capable of independently developing 5G networks across the globe. Currently, the two largest of the four companies, Ericsson, has announced an indefinite halt to operations in the Russian market, and Nokia has announced its exit from the country. Thus, this will surely have a significant impact on the relevant Russian market. Russia will invest money and focus on filling this position because it has no other alternative. At this point, Huawei made significant strides, did not back down, and decisively provided 5G-related hardware. In essence, this is the same as telling the US and other relevant businesses that Huawei wants the market you don't want. You may believe that Huawei is in the clear because of this, but after learning the whole tale, you will realize that Huawei did not take this decision lightly. Instead, Huawei has been planning to do it for a while, and it still has something to do with the US. How come? What are Huawei's advantages in the present Russian situation? How is the Russian market evolving for Huawei's 5G technology? Please turn on the notification bell and subscribe to our channel before we begin today's video. Okay, let's look at the subject we will be discussing today. Why is Huawei's strategy in Russia a long-term project rather than a one-off one? The United States must still be the starting point for everything. Huawei promptly updated a significant number of codes and searched for appropriate replacement parts when the chip regulations were amended. 2019 saw the successful global release of Huawei 5G module devices devoid of American components. Huawei still needs a market that is strong enough to compete with the United States in order to be completely free from restrictions, even though this move may be seen as a reluctance to break away from the United States. That is Russia. Huawei moved its American R&D facility to Russia, where it expects to have more than 1,500 personnel, in order to compete with the US. Huawei increased local researchers' pay, as well. Huawei also spent close to $8 million supporting local 5G talent while investing $10 million in the development of local mobile application ecological services. Additionally, Huawei intends to launch 50 dedicated stores in Russia. This implies that the local economy will immediately get an extra investment of more than 350 million rubles. Russia is certainly being told by Huawei's operations that if you give me the market, then everything will work out for the best. Russia, though, first waited and looked on. Even though Ericsson and Nokia were still present at the time, it was surprising that in April, Qualcomm, Ericsson, and Nokia withdrew, leading to a series of supply cuts in Russia. Russia stopped waiting and watching at this point and named Huawei as the first trusted supplier in the globe. Of course, Russia has its own factors to take into account. What sort of business is Huawei? Well, Huawei was the only manufacturer in the world with the most cutting-edge 5G technology and was able to offer 5G end-to-end -end services prior to the adjustment of the chip regulation. Later, the United States followed other nations in banning Huawei, although the company continues to hold the top spot in the worldwide market share for telecom equipment. Many nations have cancelled their contracts with Huawei, but there are still many more that came to sign the agreement. 
For instance, Brazil and Turkey inked a 5G contract with Huawei in March of this year. Therefore, despite the numerous barriers that the US has put in place, Huawei's worldwide business is still doing strong. If Russia is not deaf, it will undoubtedly choose to work with Huawei in the face of such a strong and cooperative company. After all, a friend of an enemy is a friend of a friend. What advantages does the present Russian environment provide Huawei, then? First first, Huawei's worldwide market share will significantly expand when Ericsson and other competitors leave. It will be more challenging for Nokia and Ericsson to overtake Huawei at that point. Second, Huawei's partnership with Russia is unquestionably its strongest marketing tool. When their own interests are at stake, the majority of Western businesses quickly forsake their consumers out of fear of the United States. Huawei, however, is unique. They are prepared to take risks because they respect the rights and interests of their clients. As a result of this precedent, Huawei will eventually be sought out for cooperation by an increasing number of nations. Whether or not the United States is supporting it at that point, I'm afraid it won't matter much. The fact that Huawei now has a fresh opportunity, particularly for its Harmony OS operating system, is of utmost importance. The fastest growing mobile operating system in history, Huawei's Harmony OS has gained more than 300 million users in just six months after its introduction in June 2021. Huawei has to find another solution for the Harmony OS system because Chinese people are now its major users. Huawei has also made clear its goals for the international market. The P50 offered in foreign regions has started using the Harmony OS system as a result of the system's popularity in the Chinese market. This indicates that the company is hoping for the Harmony OS system to go global and directly compete with the Android system. But given how reliant foreign customers are on Google, this path is bound to be challenging. The Android ecosystem that Google established will be invalid due to the actions it has taken against Russia, making it difficult for Russian users to use Google's applications. Instead, Russian users will only be able to use local applications on their mobile devices, which presents a great opportunity for Harmony OS. The key to Harmony OS entering the global market is to seize the Russian market. Huawei has the opportunity to grow its market in Russia at a time when other competitors are departing the country. The Harmony OS system is utilized in a variety of devices, including wearables, household appliances, and other items. If Harmony OS is successful in capitalizing on the current circumstance, Russia will add more than 100 million people to Harmony OS, in addition to the tens of millions of users of mobile phones and other home appliances and wearable technology. Overall, both Huawei and Russia benefit from this scenario. Do you share my opinion? Thanks for watching our video. We would appreciate it if you subscribed our channel and gave us a thumb. See you.